I welcome you back to my YouTube channel. This is again Jimmy Naftali. Uh, the channel's name is The Pediatric World. Remember, this is a channel about the kids' welfare, medical problems, and also finding solutions. So I welcome you to this episode. And in today's episode, we are continuing on our topic on malaria in children. And in our last episode, we did the severe malaria. We were able to classify. We said there is just malaria and there is that we call severe malaria, the complicated malaria. And we said, for example, the cerebral uh, malaria. These are a form of severe malaria. So in today's episode, we are going to see what malaria is, the one that is not complicated. So signs and symptoms of malaria. How do the babies, how do the children with malaria present? So number one, our presentation is fever. The hotness of the body, we say it goes up to 40 degrees uh, Celsius, the temperatures. So this is what we are calling fever. This is number one uh, presentation. When you see fevers, we the first thing that comes to our mind is malaria. Uh, they can have fevers and they can have alternating chills. So at one point, the child is shaking because of it's cold. Another time, the child, the fevers are so high and we are saying up to 40 degrees. So that is one clinical presentation of malaria. We also have small babies present with irritability. So these babies are just crying, not feeding, they're just crying. So this could be a, a sign and symptom of malaria. Uh, they also present with convulsions, uh, the shaking, remember the tremors, uh, so they can have convulsions, the small children. They present with vomiting. If this child has vomiting, we can think of malaria the first thing. Uh, in bigger children, these uh, children uh, complain of headache. Also, the bigger children will complain of joint pains or generalized uh, body weakness and um, this could be a sign and symptom of malaria so this is about just malaria this is how these babies are present we can see it's not because we are saying it's not complicated you can compare these uh, signs and symptoms with the ones we talked last time in our last episode on severe the presentation of a child with severe malaria so this is malaria now how about managing malaria? And we are going to start with treatment of severe malaria. This complicated malaria, how do we go about uh, treating? How do we go about treating? So, uh, so the first question we ask ourselves is, which is the, uh, the best anti-malaria that is currently uh, recommended for the treatment of severe malaria in children by the WHO? our World Health Organization. So which uh, drug of choice do they recommend for this severe malaria? And just before we go to the drugs, of course there are things we call supportive management. We have supportive management because supportive management is if this baby has got fevers, we want to bring the fevers down because we are saying it's a sign, uh, the first clinical sign and symptom. So we want to uh, to bring these fevers down and this is by giving maybe IV paracetamol and we keep monitoring the temperature. This is a supportive management. Remember in severe malaria, we said these babies present with respiratory distress, the difficulties in breathing. So because of these difficulties in breathing, we might find ourselves giving oxygen. So this is part of supportive management again. Uh, remember in our severe malaria again, this we say that the babies present with anemia the HB level, the blood level is below 5 grams per deciliter. We want to support this child uh, by giving, uh, doing blood transfusion. We must find ourselves uh, doing blood transfusion and this is another uh, supportive management of these kids. So before we go direct to the anti-malaria of choice, we have to do the supportive management for these babies. We don't want to lose them, so we need to do those other things. We will attend to these fevers, we want to attend to these uh, low blood levels by doing blood transfusion. Again, we might do oxygen therapy because these babies have got respiratory distress. They are not able to breathe. So then, uh, we go now to the drug of choice, the one that the WHO recommends for the 
a treatment of severe malaria, the anti-malaria of choice? And the answer is we give IV or parenteral. Parenteral is IV giving through the vein. Remember, IV is we do, we, we look for the vein and give. Here we don't do oral drugs because this child is really sick. So we want to do IV so that even the drug can work fast. So we do IV uh, of a drug we call a tesunate. A tesunate then is a drug of choice in treatment of severe malaria. Hope this is clear. It is our drug of choice. Um, if this attestinate is not available, if it's not available, uh, we can go for a second line drug, which is quinine. And again, this quinine, you want to give IV, you want to give IV quinine or the parenteral. Parenteral is the same as giving IV through the vein. We give the quinine, but we are saying our first line drug in treatment is the drug we are calling attestinate. So those are our two drugs in uh, our two anti-malarial drugs in uh, to treat severe malaria. So after we give this, uh, we give until the child can take orally, if the child is able to take orally, or we give for um for twenty four hours, even if the patient can tolerate oral medications. Earlier. So we want to give this IV drugs, this IV attestinate or quinine for the first 24 hours. So what is the dosage then? How, how do we give? What is the dosage of these uh, two drugs? So we start with our first line drug, the attestinate. So we normally give, uh, remember in all cases, in all cases while treating children, we go by kgs of this child. We also go by the age. The age and kgs are key here so that you can be able to calculate their dosages as their weight, as their kilos. So at this unit, we give, we want to give at a dose of 2.4 milligrams per kg. And this is if the child is above 20 kgs. So if the baby is uh, above 20 kgs, we want to do 2.4 milligrams. We calculate by kg. Uh, for example, if the child is 10 kg, so we do 2.4 times the, the 10 kgs if the child is less, uh, if the child is more, I mean, if the child is more than 20 kgs, we do 2.4 milligrams. And remember, we are doing IV through the vein and also we can, let me mention, we can also give IM. If we don't get the IV access, we can do IM through the muscle. This is what we call IM. So, and we give at zero hour, that is during admission. We want to give another dosage, the one we have calculated. We want to give after 12 hours and we give at 24 hours. So we are giving at zero hours. This is on admission. Repeat at 12 hours. You also want to give at 24 hours and we are doing IV or IM. This is the 2.5 milligrams and this if is if the child is above 20 kgs. How about if the child is uh, below 20 kgs? Uh, we give a dose of 3 milligrams per kg, 3 milligrams this time, not 2.4. If the child is below 20 kgs, we want to give a higher dose. So we calculate 3 milligrams per kg. Again, we want to give IV. And again, if the IV the, through the vein is not accessible, we want to do IM through the muscle so we do again at zero hour this is at admission we want to give at 12 hours again we also want to repeat the dose at 24 hours and this is daily until the child can tolerate oral medication if they are able after 24 hours and the child is able to take orally now we switch we don't give any more iv or im we switch now to oral medication and this we are going to see later what those oral medications are so i hope this is clear we are saying we are giving at in all cases if uh, what is changing here is the dosage and it is uh, what is determining is the kilos of the baby. So we are saying above 20 kgs, we are giving 2.4 and below 20 kgs, we are giving at 3 milligrams per kg. We are doing IV. Uh, if you can't access IV, we are saying we can give IM and we are giving at admission, that is the zero hour. We are giving, repeating at 12 hours and we are repeating again at 24 hours. 
and from there if the child can tolerate to take this uh, medi oral medications now we give the oral anti-malarial so i hope this is very clear and we are going to reach there for today so that people can digest people can be able to understand we want to go bit by bit so thank you this is the end of this episode uh we shall continue from here continue subscribing continue asking questions go to the comment section drop your comments down there about these videos again remember to share them widely so that all people can access these videos they can be of help the main aim of this channel is to create the awareness we want people mothers to be aware and to create the know-how on what really happens to these children the common illnesses affecting children while growing up we want everybody to be part of management management of these babies so remember to subscribe hit the red button please sub subscribe subscribe uh leave your notifications on turn them on so that you are able to know every time i'm posting a new video thank you so much my people till next time